Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. This is a tutorial to refresh your memory on 3D statics. Um, and what we have here is an L shaped member. So it's kind of shaped like an L and it lies in the XY plane. There is X and there is Y. So it's actually a planar problem. You could actually draw it in 2D like this if you wanted to, but if you were to draw it in that view, the applied force is gonna go straight into the page. So it's a little easier to see in 3D. We do have a force in the negative Z direction, just one simple force applied to this member. And what we want to do is determine internal forces and moments at the cut plane using the equations of equilibrium and the cut plane is back here. All right, so we've got two different approaches that we could use for this uh, problem. And for a problem this simple, my preference is going to be number one. So running the equations of equilibrium manually. And the other approach I'll put down here, so I have plenty of room, um, work with cross products. OK, so I'll do it the way that I feel is more intuitive first. So approach number one, and then we will do the same thing with the cross product. And the more complicated the structure is, the more likely I am to do a cross product. And the simpler it is, the more likely I am to do this kind of by hand or manually. So we can do both and see how this works. All right, so in order to run the, equa the equations of equilibrium manually, the first thing we want to do is summation of forces. And we can do the x direction equals 0 and deduce that there is no there is no x direction force at the cut plane required for equilibrium. Next, we could do the y direction and make the same conclusion. Nothing going on there. And now let's do the z direction. And so I need an equal and opposite force back at that plane. So F sub Z is equal to, it has a one kip um, magnitude, and it needs to go equal and opposite to that. That goes in the negative Z direction. So the one we want back there at the cut plane is going to be in the positive Z direction. And I'm going to put a new layer. And if I can keep this straight, I'm going to do my internals at the far plane in this pink color. All right, so now we've got a one kip force back at the cut plane and the other two are zero. So now we get to do our moment equations. Okay, so we want to do a moment summation with respect to X, with respect to Y, with respect to Z. And to help you visualize these, I made a little SketchUp model. Okay, so check your X, Y's, and Z's as we go into the CAD model. All right, so here's what is going on here. Okay, so there's my L-shaped cross-section, or not cross-section, but our L-shaped member. I made it a square in cross-section, okay? So it's just a bent square, essentially. And this red axis is X. This blue axis coming up, that is going to be Y. And this kind of dash line coming towards us here, that's going to be our Z. All right, and I've got uh, my applied force right there, and I have dimensions. And I just realized I modeled this in um, feet instead of inches. So I'm just going to overwrite this, make that three feet, uh, three inches, not three feet. Same thing here. So make that five inches in lieu of five feet. That was just a little error on my part when I built the model. 
All right, so if we are looking for rotation about X, here's what we want to do. We come back here to the cut plane. That's what we're solving for, internal forces and moments back here. And what I want to do is determine whether or not this body would rotate as a rigid body about the centroidal x-axis, this red one that's kind of diagonal on the screen. So what I would do is kind of put this rotation here. And then the question is, does that force tend to rotate the body about that axis? And the answer is yes. It'll tilt just like that. You see that? Okay, so that force tends to rotate the body about that axis. That's how we know there's an equal and opposite um, internal moment back here for equilibrium about the x axis. Okay, at this point, you're going to want to do the right hand rule. And that rotation that we just saw, let me do it one more time right here. Okay. So go ahead and grab your, your right hand curl your fingers with that rotation, your right thumb should be pointing down this red axis over kind of at the right side of the screen. Okay. Um, okay, so that is the tendency of the body to rotate about X. In other words, the tendency to rotate is double arrow positive X. Now the equal and opposite rotation back at the cut plane is going to be double arrow negative x to hold it in equilibrium. Okay, so here is positive x. In order to get equilibrium, let me switch. I think I already made a mistake here, so I'm going to just grab all this stuff. Cut paste. Give me one second to get my layers working properly. That one's going to go there. Okay, and this one's just going to have my reactions or my internal forces and moments back there. Okay, cool. Um, da, 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 da. So we need to add this moment. It has a magnitude of one kip at a distance of three inches. So that's going to end up being three kip inches. And let's write out the equation here. The moment about x is equal to a force of three of one kip, a force of one kip, a perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and that centroidal x axis. That's going to be here three that's inches. And we need that to point in the negative x direction for static equilibrium. So that's best expressed like this. All right, let's go on to summation of moments about a y axis, the centroidal y axis at the cut plane. Let's pop back to the model here and see if there if that force causes a tendency to rotate about y. So I pick the body, I go into my rotate tool. This time I want to rotate about y. So see how that blue circle is matching up with that vertical blue axis. I'm going to put it right there at the centroid of the cut plane. And does that force tend to rotate the body about y? You bet, just like that. Okay, so right hand rule time. The force tends to rotate the body, double arrow up. Therefore, the equal and opposite moment at the cut plane is double arrow down. Let's get that into our model. Go back. You know, I did the same thing again. <laughs> Let's fix this real quick. Thanks for your patience. You're awesome. Let's grab all that. Cut, paste. And basically, I want this. I want this one to go here. I want this one to go with this one. Okay. Okay, and let's put that internal moment about y back at the cut plane now that I'm at the correct layer. All right, so we said that the tendency of the force is to rotate the body double arrow up. 
Therefore, the equal and opposite moment back at the cut plane is double arrow down. Okay. What is my distance between this force and its perpendicular distance back to the axis? That's going to be five inches. Okay, so one times five is going to be five. And I will update that right here. Five kip inches, double arrow down. Okay, get back on the correct layer and we'll do the calcs over to the side. So m sub y is equal to a one kip force. Distance of five inches, double arrow down or negative y. That's why I need a negative sign there. And that's going to be negative five kip inches. Okie doke. Last one. Does the force tend to rotate the body about the z axis? Let's visualize what that would look like. Grab this body again, start my rotate command. This time I want with respect to z. Z is that green axis. So I've got my circle encircling the z axis. I'm going to locate it right here at the cut plane. That's what you got to do to visualize this. And here's my question. Does that force have any tendency to rotate the body that way? And the answer is no, it absolutely does not. Okay, mathematically speaking, it is because the force is per, I'm sorry, the force is parallel to that very axis. It doesn't have a perpendicular component. That's why it can't cause a moment about that axis. It is absolutely parallel. So we know this one is going to be a zero. Okay, and so this is the way that I would do this if left to my own devices. I would kind of run through the six equations of equilibrium in my head, the ones that are equal to zero. As you're learning, sure, it's a great idea to write all six down, um, but kind of as you get more fluent with this, you can really focus on the three that are non-zero, and then the, the, the ones that are zero, just kind of ignore them. I have to write those down once you get pretty good at this process. All right, so that is one way to approach this and that is the way that I would do. However, you can also work with cross, pro uh, cross products. I wanted to make sure you understood that as well. So here's how you would set that up. A little bit of review in case you haven't thought about this for a while. So the moment of a force about an axis is moment equals r cross f. r is my position vector. Okay, it measures from point of interest to um, any point on the forces line of action. OK, so if I were to give this, man, I keep writing on the wrong layer. What is wrong with me? I'm going to fix this, and then hopefully I will not make this mistake again. I'm going to cut all that, paste that, go to my layers. Stop messing up my internals because I want to keep those on the screen and hide this other stuff a little bit later on. OK, I think I'm good again. Annotations is my current layer, and I am ready to go. OK, so if I were to add some points here, so let's say that the centroid of this back plane, let's say that that centroid is A. And what I'm talking about in 3D is basically turning this around and that point right there in the middle of that red square, we're going to call that point A. And what I'm going to do is choose point B to be, let me shift this over so you can see it. Point B is going to be down here at the bottom, that point right there. Okay, so that meets my criteria. 
I need one point at the centroid of the cut plane and my other point can be anywhere on the line of action of that force. So I'm just gonna pick that center point right there to make my calcs nice and easy. So if I call that point A, if I call this one B, my position vector for the moment of this force about, you know, and actually, let me fix this terminology. This is a um, moment about a point because when we're using vector notation like this, it's going to tell us all three of these in the output. Okay, so we're going to output a vector for this. So this is moment of force about a point, and that moment is going to have three components, one with respect to x, one with respect to y, one with respect to z. In other words, the cross product we're going to do is going to basically do this same calculation for us. I just want to show you that you can use either one. Um, so here I would use um, the position from A to B, right, and that's the moment about point A, and that's due to the one kip force. Let me plug that in for F. Okay, now this is not what we need. We do not need the moment about A due to the force F. What we need is the equal and opposite um, moment vector, okay? So for equilibrium, we need and I'm just going to call this, I think, my reacting moment. So I'll do M for moment, R for reacting moment. And it is equal to, it is equal and opposite to A. So I can just call that negative M sub A. Now, how do I make my cross product work? Well, I just changed the order of these two terms. So instead of doing R cross F, we switch it around to F cross R. We're still going to use R A to B and F plug in for the force. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and do this calculation. Actually, let me just move this up. I'm going to grab a slightly finer pen and do some black ink. Okay, so R A sub B, that's a vector. If you want to give your vectors little arrow hats, that's fine. These are all vectors. Okay, they're all vectors up there at the top too, right? But when you do cross products, it's more common to give them little decorative arrow hats to be clear about vectors. All right, so here is my position vector from A to get to B. I want to go five in the positive X and then three in the negative Y and zero with respect to Z. So I can do kind of an open caret and I want to do five comma minus three comma zero units of that position vector are inches. The longer way to write this, your, your other professors may have done it this way, something like that. Same, same idea, just kind of a simpler notation by putting the three terms in parentheses. I'm gonna stick with that. Okay, and my force is one kip and it is in the negative z direction. So all I have to do is zero component in x, zero component in y, minus one kip in the z direction. Okay, at this point we can do that cross product. And I have it pre, if you have a, um, well I know you all have a scientific calculator. This is a good one just to program in so you don't have to do these manually. But if you do need to do them manually, the best way to set it up is with this little determinant. You have I, J, K on the top. Next comes R, so 5 minus 3, 0. Next up is F, 0, 0, minus 1. And I know there's two ways that professors teach cross products. The way that I do it is basically like this. Let's see if I can just explain it and then I'll erase what I'm about to mark. Okay, so I times that product minus that minus J times that product minus that plus K times that product minus that. Okay, that's the way that I've always done this. I do know that some professors teach something like this. They do like I, J, K, I, J. 
5 minus 3, 0, 5 minus 3, 0, 0 minus 1, 0, 0. And then they do, I don't even know exactly how this works. I think they do that and that and that somehow. So if you learned that method, you know, that's just another way to reach the same conclusion. Stick with whatever you know, whatever you were taught. I'll do it. Um, I'll do it my way here. Okay, so I'm going to do the product of minus 3 and minus 1. That's 3 minus the product of 0 times 0. That's 0. And that gives me my i component. I just realized that I reversed the terms <laughs> in my determinant. Okay, so the cross product is context specific. You have to have a, the order of the vectors correct to make this work. And I'm sorry, I just made a mistake here. Um, so because we're doing not R um, cross F, but F cross R, we're going to do 0, 0, minus 1 here, 5 minus 3 zero there. So if you were copying and not thinking, uh, please correct your error. All right, let's do business as usual. All right, so i times the product of zero times zero, that's zero, minus the product of minus three and minus one, that's three, that one gets an i. Next term, you got to preload that negative if you're using this method. Zero times zero is zero. Minus negative five, that's positive five, that's my j. And last term, we'd use a plus. Uh, zero times minus three is zero, zero times five is zero. So we're going to get a zero K term here. And, you know, go ahead and give this thing some units at the end. So these are kips times inches. Give myself a little more real estate height. One, five, five, five. I think that'll do it. Okay. So what we're doing is using the cross product, product to compute that reacting moment. This can be simplified to minus 3i minus 5j. That is a vector in kip inches. Or in terms of its component, m sub x equals minus 3 kip inches. m sub y equals minus 5 kip inches. And that is exactly what we determined up above, right? So we figured that out up here. M sub x equals negative 3 kip inches. M sub y equals negative 5 kip inches. And here it is down here. So either method works. Um, like I said, I prefer the top method whenever the problem isn't too complicated. If I start to get lots of applied forces or moments or, you know, and I have to do this by hand, um, then I kind of turn to cross products when I need to do so. Okay, great. So we've got these all figured out through method one and or method two. Of course, while you're learning, checking your work by doing both methods is an awesome, awesome thing to do. All right, what I want to do now is put those on a little DX slice that is in equilibrium. So here's what I mean by that. I'm going to zoom in over here. Zoom, zoom, zoom right there. I have a tiny slice ready to go. You see it right there? I'm going to kind of fade it out and then fade it in right there. Okay, so that is a little tiny slice that is right there, a little differential DX little slice of the material. Okay, and what I want to do is take that slice pull it out and enlarge it. And that's what I'm going to show over here on the right side of the screen. Okay, so there is my big slice. I'm going to add a layer on top of that. Okay, and I think that I am good to go. All right, so the last thing that I want to do is make sure that this little D x slice. In other words, we're taking just a differential distance here. 
taking the limit as that dx goes to zero, so that I'm really zooming into the plane that contains what we had labeled point A earlier. And here's the best way to kind of think through this. So everything that we did here is on the back plane or the negative x face. In this picture, we can really only see the positive x face. So to put this little free body in equilibrium, we have to flip the directions of each one of these in the back. So let's start with the force. So instead of going one kip in the positive z direction, let's just put it in the negative direction. There is my one kip force. There's an equal and opposite one on the back face. We just can't easily see it from this view. All right, next up, let's do our twisting, our torsion. That's a moment about x, tending to twist that bar. That is a double arrow negative x on the back face, so double arrow positive x on the near face. That one's labeled as three kip inches. This one, if you wanted to, you know, you could try to draw that one on the back equal and opposite if you wanted, but kind of hard to see from this view. All right, um, on the back face, we have double arrow down five kip inches. So on the front face, we need double arrow up five kips times inches. We want to kind of cartoon that on the back. It would look like that. And I guess since I'm doing all the forces on the back, I'll just dash in that shearing force as well. All right, cool. So what have we learned in this video? We have learned to use the equations of equilibrium using either two-dimensional techniques or three-dimensional cross products to calculate internal forces and moments at a plane due to an applied force or forces or moments or moments. Um, and then we've gone and zoomed into that plane, taken another little free body, put that one in equilibrium to determine internal forces and moments moments on the positive and negative faces of the free body, keeping in mind that they're all equal and opposite. One final little bit of notation, just to make sure we're on the same page. You could call this one kip force a force in the z direction or a shear force in the z direction. The three kip inch, that one is about the longitudinal axis x, so we could call that an m sub x or a t sub x, where the t is torque. Torque is a more specialized term than the generic term moment. And this one here, the five kip inches, that is a moment about y, and you can't call that a torque because it bends the beam or bends the member. It does not twist it. All right. Thanks for hanging in there. Kind of a long video. I hope this was helpful and kind of stitched some statics concepts together. Uh, thanks for tuning in and have a great day.